In this video, I am finally tackling the issue of having all of my pots and pans stacked on top of one another. I'm gonna show you how I made this very organized but simple pull out pot and pan rack. Real quick, I want to thank this video sponsor, which is Simply Safe. First step is to make the body to house the pots and pans. I'm starting with making a jig to create a curved side. I did this by clamping two blocks of wood on either end of some spare MDF. I'm using my armor tool workbench and the dog hole self-adjusting clamps here. Next, I found a flexible material and clamped it down on both blocks, spanning across the two. This creates a subtle curve in between the stretch. Using one hand, I pressed down on the material to hold the curve in place while I lightly traced it with a pencil. After removing the blocks, you can see I'm left with a nice easy curve, which then I can complete the front and back by hand before taking it over to the bandsaw to cut out. If you don't have a bandsaw, a jigsaw could also work here. At this point, I only cut right outside of my line because the next step is to use the sander to clean up my cut perfectly to the line. I used my Triton oscillating belt sander for this task. The sander actually can go from a spindle sander to a belt sander, which is really handy. Once I'm happy with the final shape, I now have a template to use for making the four needed sides. However, if you'd like a downloadable template, then I have that available on my website. To stick the template temporarily to my workpiece, I first laid down some painter's tape, then ran a small bead of DAPS Rapid Fuse glue, which is strong holding but fast setting. Now I could put corresponding painter stripes on the template and stick the two together. I let that sit in clamps for about a minute, then went over to the router table to start cutting in the profile. Using a flush trim bit in my Triton router table, I was very quickly able to cut my part to match my template exactly and the painter's tape trick allowed me to easily pry my template off with no mess left behind. Then move to the next part and repeat it. I love that trick. Okay, the first step of getting the sides done is complete. Now let's make the front and back to attach them. I want these drawers to have flexibility, so I'm incorporating slots to house dividers, which will allow me to separate things. To create these slots, I start off with a long board of half inch ply, which I'm making the entire body from. And my router table is a quarter inch bit. I used the fence to cut in my first line, but then I pushed it out of the way and set in its place a jig. This jig has a quarter inch fence glued onto it so that I can now cut all of my next slots at exact intervals. All I have to do is place my previous slot on this fence, then run my board through again. It takes just a second to make this jig. It's made from scraps, but will save a lot of time when cutting in these grooves. With the slots cut in, now I could take my board to the table saw and cut it to the height needed. Each drawer will have four slotted parts, the front, back, and two in the middle, and all three locations are different heights. Just make sure you're grabbing the right one when assembling. I mean, it's pretty easy to tell as it should be plush with the top of the sides. I'm using Depp's weld wood and a brad nailer to assemble everything. This is an interior wood glue made by Depp that sets fast, grips tight, and sands easily when dried. Real quick, I want to thank this video sponsor, which is Simply Safe. Many of you know I've used Simply Safe for my personal and commercial shop security for a while now. It's incredibly effective, reliable home or shop security that will make sure your property is safe. You order it online or by phone, it's delivered right to your door and you set it up yourself in under an hour. I've had a different security system set up in my home in the past and wasn't very effective or easy. But I've been so satisfied with how my Simply Safe systems have secured my workshops, so I'm finally adding it to my home. Just as before, I found all of the devices to be very reliable, set up as a breeze, and they're very easy to use. I've got the security system installed, Simply Safe sensors to cover the windows, and HD cameras inside and out. They all work great. The door lock lets me grant access remotely so I can set up unique access codes and get alerted to who's unlocking or locking the door. There is a ton of value in having the peace of mind that my home and shops are professionally monitored 24 seven. And if anything does happen, the police get called. It feels so great to know that now my shop and homes have the protection of Simply Safe. If you're ready to easily take control of your home or shop security, then you can visit simplysafe.com slash April to learn more. 
Once I attach the front and back, I also attach the bottom in the same way. Now before attaching the two center pieces, I'm going to first make some dividers. You can very easily leave these square, but I wanted to add in a simple curve to match the sides. I started by cutting some quarter inch plywood at the bandsaw with the fence in place. One way to get the needed curve is to set this part in the drawer and trace the profile, then cut. However, with so many to do, I instead used a jig and a router table. I grabbed the template I made for the sides and glued some quarter inch scraps to partition off the front and back. This way I could take my quarter inch square pieces and put them in these pockets, allowing me to trim off everything overhanging. And just a tip if you recreate this jig, I used a little spray of DAPS contact cement to attach a piece of coarse grit sandpaper to each section. This stuff virtually bonds any two materials together. This way it helps grip onto and hold the part in place while I'm cutting it. What I would do is slip a square piece into the section, make sure it was seated all the way down. Then I would flip it over and use the flush trim bit to copy the curve exactly onto this part. I was able to do the same to create the large dividers as well. It's pretty neat, huh? Okay, now that I have dividers, I am ready to find the location of the center wall of the drawer. I slipped in two dividers on the front section, then used that to place the wall. This way I can ensure I'm not making it too small. I use glue and a few nails on either side to hold it in position. If everything is done correctly, I should be able to move these dividers around to any slot along the wall. Perfect. Now let's install them in a cabinet. Now every cabinet will be a little different, so even if you get the plans for this project, be sure to measure your exact opening before building. The main install process will remain the same though. You need to attach a runner to the left and right of the opening so the drawer can slide in and out. Clearing the hinge, the middle style, and maybe even the front left of the face break. I'm using some three quarter inch plywood for my runners and I cut these from some scrap in my shop. Then use my armor pocket hole jig to drill in a few pocket holes. The front location, I face the hole towards the short side to go into the face frame. Then the back location facing the long side to go into the bottom of the cabinet. Again, just look at your setup to see what will work. Once the runners are in, I placed a scrap on the cabinet's bottom to create a standoff for the sliders, then attach those two together. Next, I placed a few more spacers on the bottom of the cabinet before setting in the drawer. This allowed me to pull out the slides and connect it to the drawer with it in position. I attached the front two, then take out the drawer to attach the far back location. Now I should be able to reconnect the two pieces and have an operational drawer. Woohoo! <laughs> Let's see if this is going to work. Let's see, I can place my larger pots and pans in the back while using the large dividers to separate them as needed. Then on the front, the smaller ones can go and even some lids. The handles can all face inward and even though there is still some slight moving to get something out, it is far less than what it used to be. Heck yeah. I repeated the install process on the space just to the right of this one. I don't have any smaller lids or pans for this front section, so I'm using it for large lid storage instead. What do y'all think? I am personally so happy with the way that it turned out. It's definitely so much more organized looking than my old system and things are so much easier to get to than they used to be. What a win-win. Keep in mind that while I made two of these for my pots and pans, you can take the same idea and use it for almost everything stored in the kitchen. Now, that would be great. <laughs> As for this project, it only took me a day from start to finish, so if it's on your to-do list, then definitely take a look at my website for the plans. I will see you on my next project, guys. If you are looking for some great sawhorse plans, then I have a link for you right here for this one, as well as two other variations. This one's cheap, it's sturdy, it's very quick to put together, and the thing that I like the best is that it's foldable. And it's collapsible.